What's going on everyone? I'm Chris Baker and I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 86 of Behind the Tool Belt TC Backer Construction. Um, we got Ty back back this week mm -hmm. after a long week down at um, at the roofing conference that was going on in Vegas. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to go over today, a lot of cool stuff that, that he's seen down there. Yep, for sure. um, the weather is not that great, so bear with us if we have any kind of interruptions or anything like that. Yes, yeah, seriously. Um, it is raining, raining outside, I'm sure you guys all seen. Um, so yeah, let's just hop right into it, man. Um, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. You know, I'm, yeah, it, it was it seemed like you had a really good time down there, and you know, got to got I a did. lot of good nuggets and yeah. seen a lot of cool products and met a lot of cool people. Yeah, and, for sure. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's now, it was cool <laughs> because um, the week before that, actually a couple days before that, I got to go upstate New York uh, to go visit my family, my my extended family that. Some of which I haven't seen for many years, but that we had a family reunion, the annual family reunion, and I haven't been there for for at least three years. So it was nice to kind of get away, and, and of course I brought Vic with me. Mm -hmm. And of course we didn't stop talking about work. And uh, we were able, but it was nice because we're, we're right outside the Anirondacks, so we're in the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're actually in the Anirondacks, but not like, we're, a, few miles away from the lakes and stuff but it was real quiet it was real nice and we didn't have a whole lot of cell phone service so there wasn't like a lot of interruptions or stressful phone calls mm -hmm. or whatever everything seemed to be pretty calm everybody you know back here seemed to have everything under control uh and uh so anyhow i went up there friday saturday no we left thursday thursday friday and saturday came back saturday after the reunion came back up got, got back here probably about 10 o'clock Went to bed, actually got some things ready to get ready to go to Vegas on Monday. Sunday, kind of finished up some things, flew out. Our first, actually our first flight was canceled. Um, we were coming out of Harrisburg, mm -hmm. going over to Chicago. That flight got canceled. They tried to put us on another flight. We decided to, to cancel them and go to BWI and flew directly with Southwestern. And we were there in probably, I think, five hours. And then when I got there, I got a notification on my phone stating that they were just getting ready to uh, take off. If I, so if we would have left from Harrisburg, yeah. we would have never taken off from Chicago or Harrisburg, one of the two, um, until we actually got there Monday afternoon. So it was pretty cool. And like you said, I, I got to meet a lot of people, uh, mingled. I sat in on a lot of good speakers and, and educational um, you know sessions and stuff like that and things that struck my interest on anything from marketing to branding to um, working with the, the next generation that's coming up through right. the ranks and stuff like that and how to be a better mentor how to be a better leader how to be a better owner you know and, and the cool thing the one thing that I picked up when I was out there and, and I've, I've heard this before and, and I've tried to practice this was but not just trying to be a better leader but but, but more so in my personal life, being a better, better father, you know, brother, son, um, you know, just trying to be there for people in my family and not just getting leftovers from work. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. When I get home and stuff like that. So I, I really picked up on that. And, I'm you glad know. you brought that up, Ty, because like, one thing that, I've, that I was hoping for, I've never been to one of these big, mm -hmm. you know, work conventions. Right. No matter, no matter what field you're in, Right. You, know, you go to these big conventions that, that have to do with your industry. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It's cool that there's it's not just focused on your industry. So yeah. there, there is a lot of focus there, but yes. what made me think of that is what you have up on the screen back behind yes. here. And I don't know if you guys can read that. I'm sure you can. If you want yep. to change, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Yes. Um, and that is, that is huge, man. It I is mean, huge. It, it's so true because it's so easy sometimes mm -hmm. um, to take the the road that you're comfortable with that, right. that you're used to yes and you know which which is fine for some people you know what i mean uh -huh. but you're, you're you're never going to expand and and grow without stepping outside of your comfort zone because you know Absolutely. outside of your comfort zone yeah. is, is where the growth happens yeah, exactly yeah <clears throat> if you're not growing you're going right you know and, and then really that's the bottom line and like you said you know, i've spent most of my career 
putting myself in uncomfortable situations, whether yeah. it be being around people, mm -hmm. uh, going and doing Facebook Lives, going to meetings, going and flying, getting on a plane, right. and, and flying to Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm sure you guys heard that. We're, <laughs> we're in the midst of this um, right now, and it's, it's, it's pretty gnarly, yeah. actually. But, um, so, but yeah. So yeah, I've, I've spent most of my career in uncomfortable situations, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I found over the years, you know, when I start to feel comfortable, that's, that's, there's probably trouble lurking around the corner. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And honestly, one of the reasons why we are where we're at today was is because I didn't ever want, I, you know, I, I don't want to say that I just don't settle for, like, you know, some people want the, the house and the and the white picket fence and, and, and the dog and the wife and the kids and, and they're just okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But there's something a little bit different in me that that, that drives me to, to want, you know, not more and not in a greedy way right. whatsoever. And what's driving me today is to want to see more for you, mm -hmm. to want to see more for Vic and, and, and Tam and, and watching Tam grow. Mm -hmm. and flourish and and jocelyn and sam mm -hmm. you know we just started a new program at work that we're launching and i guess everyone's going to find out right now that we're 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 offering tuition mm -hmm. um reimbursement right okay so tam's going to, or i'm sorry sam's going to school and we also have some other things that we're offering too um and tam can let everybody know more about that it's through uh, linkedin learning mm -hmm. where we we paid for this thing and there's hr uh, things in there. There's QuickBook courses to take. There's now you're not going to gain a degree from it, but but it's going to help educate and train people where I can. Right. You, you know what I mean? But we're offering those things, and that's that's open to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have all the details worked out. But Sam was in the midst of going to school prior to coming to work for us, mm -hmm. and I didn't want her to stop not going to school. So, you know, I know, I know working full time and going to school and then trying to afford this and that. So we, we offered to do a re, uh, reimbursement of tuition. So yeah. there would be more to come on that. So Tam's got all the details and paperwork and, and how we determine who, who and when can go. Because obviously I don't want to have five different people going to school right. at one time. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we have like this. You know, and, and then once you get elected to, to go get the, the uh, tuition reimbursement, you know, there's certain criteria. Like you have to maintain a 2.85 GPA, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Right. You, you can't, you know, miss school. You can't miss work. You can't, you know, there's certain criteria. And right. again, Tam can let everybody know a little more about that. Yeah. Um, but I think that's pretty cool because what really what it is, it's not, it's not about improving ourselves at work, but it's improving the quality of our lives. Yeah. You know, and really, that's the point I'm trying to make because really, we come to work to, to pay our bills, put a roof over our head, and and put food in the refrigerator. Well, if we can't enjoy those things or enjoy ourselves while we're at work, because let's face it, we're at work more than we are at home. Absolutely. It's giving me goosebumps yeah, right now because absolutely. where we're at, at least for me, where I'm at in my career today, and, and and able to have been able to surround myself around people like you. And, and the Victors and the Kims and the Jocelyns, the Sams, the Perrys, the Tams, Lauren's, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Sarah, the new girl, the, the Kevin Dinguses, the Glens, the Denny's, the Howie's, the, the Collins, yeah. all of them. Absolutely. Okay? I wouldn't be able to go and do these things to hire my education. Right. You know, am I going to go back to school someday? I don't know. I thought about it and we talked yeah. about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? There may be something along the lines of, I don't know, maybe I'll get into graphic design or maybe I'll get into to marketing. Maybe, I don't know yeah. yet. But right now, and always has been, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was the cool thing when we got to go to the IRE, which is the largest roofing conference in the country. It's the International Roofing Expo. All of the players, anyone who's anyone from, from the, the oldest, largest shingle manufacturers in the country, to, to new products that are being launched on the market this year or coming out next year. Right. So it was really cool to, to visit those <laughs> exhibitors. You know, some of I didn't know, never heard of, some we use on a daily basis. Um, and you can show some of the pictures later. You know, Stinger was there, as stupid as that is, it, it's, it's a way that we fasten our underlayments right. to the roof. Stinger was there, yeah. who would have thought? And, and I said to someone before we left, 
you know, if you walk around our shop or look around my office, whatever product or whatever tool you see laying on the ground on the shelf is going to be here. Mm -hmm. And that was no exaggeration. And then some. Right. Stuff that you've never even heard of. Yes. Right. Yes. And then mm -hmm. some was there. So it was, it was a really cool experience. <laughs> um, you know, and I felt good to be there. Now the time change kind of threw me off a little bit. I felt like I lost three hours in the morning because when it was five o'clock there, it was eight o'clock here. So when I was getting up at 4.30, you guys were already three hours ahead of me. So anxiety was kicking in. So right away, I'm going to my phone and I'm checking on my phone, like <laughs> what emails, what text messages, what phone calls. But it wasn't that bad because you yeah. guys had the helm. Yeah. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? It was cool. But still, I had that anxiety. Of course, I'm calling Vic. I probably talked to you a couple times. I'm on the horn with Lauren, Chuck, and Glenn, like, hey, how are you guys doing? Checking in. Yeah. Not because right. there's an issue or an email or a text message, just I was checking in because you're that's my that, people. That's that little bit of the, it's hard to let go. Yeah. That's still, that's still existing. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure it helps that, you know, you, you make those phone calls not because there's an issue going on, but just to check in. You know what I mean? So yeah. That, that probably helps ease your mind. And I, I want to yeah. touch on a little bit. Um, about the what you were saying with the uh, tuition reimbursement and you know yeah not not all your your skills that you're going to learn in whatever career um, or industry you go in is going to be learned at you know with a degree you know what I mean so right. a lot of your trainings you know let's just take nursing for example okay mm -hmm. yes you have to go to you know a lot more schooling actual you know college and get right. actual college credits to become a nurse mm -hmm. but a lot of the stuff that you have to learn you go to classes after school right. you know what I mean at you know throughout your whole career mm -hmm. to uh, to you know re-up your education right um, you know trade schools and that kind of stuff they're gonna teach you a general you know idea of, of whatever trade you want to go in mm -hmm. but you're gonna do classes where you're gonna learn that specific trade that you're going to a lot more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, than yes. you would in an actual classroom setting. So yes. um, if anyone out there was, you know, interested in the in the whole tuition reimbursement thing or, you know, is, you know, thinking that they want to do something else that isn't necessarily college, yeah. don't get discouraged by the fact that it may not be, you know, an accredited college right. in, the, in the country or something, right. you know, yes. you're still going to make, you're still going to get sometimes even better of an education, more hands-on, yeah. um, the classes are smaller, the right. classrooms are smaller, you have Absolutely. more one-on-one -on -one time. Yep. So there is a lot more benefits to that um, versus an actual college. So, right. but with that said, you know, yeah. someone like Sam who's going for accounting and stuff, you know yes. what I mean? That's a great example. So right. she's gonna go and she's gonna have to get, you know, 80 credits of, of college, right. but then there's going to be work she's going to have to do after that to maintain her licenses and maintain Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. If she wants to be a CPA, yeah, you have to go after college and, and go to these special classes, right. take tests, you know, yep. do all these things. So yeah, um, it's it's great and it is and very exciting. Geo, I'm glad you tagged Taylor in this. We have a, a young kid that works for us that just graduated high school. Mm -hmm. um, that's looking, you know, he told me recently. He wants to take a break from school for a year, work for us, and then yeah. you know pursue college. Right. This is a great program Perfect for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and I think we may have talked about him. Before. Right. Yeah. yeah. He was about he this. was going to be our guinea pig with this whole thing. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So yeah, um, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff, man. And I I really like the fact that um, you know, like I said before, the the focus wasn't 100 percent on roofing the whole time. You know, no. there was. There, I'm sure there was a schedule that you had every day yep. that, you know, this speaker was speaking here. Yes. And those speakers are really good at getting your juices flowing. They man. were. It was great. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely wonderful. The only downside to it was was the jet lag of coming back. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Which I had never really experienced that before because I, I don't know why. It was just so odd because, I mean, we've been to Mexico and, and, and places like that and, and have done things like that, but I, I don't think I've never experienced like that three hour time change where it just, it, on the way back, yeah. it really threw me off where I couldn't, you know, I didn't sleep for a day and a half since we were back last night. I actually finally got some sleep, um, which was pretty cool. And um, what, what's Lauren saying? We're glad that you're a part of this. Yeah, Dingus, thanks for watching. Dingus, and Dingus <laughs> plays a big part in this. 
too, man. So yeah. I was talking to him a little bit tonight about, you know, the expansion and the new things and the processes that we're putting in place and, and the new system and, and the entire infrastructure of the company mm -hmm. is being rebuilt right now. Right. And, and it's very, it, it, it's very painful, but in the same time, in the same token, it's, it's very exciting. And I think 99.9% .9 of us is drinking that Kool-Aid. Like we know this is all gonna help us oh, in the long run. And to be able to do services like we're doing for, for Sam right now, and then and then Cam turned me on to this uh, LinkedIn learning thing that mm -hmm. like the possibilities and the things and the courses that you can take in this thing are like endless. Like right. there was so much stuff in there that I wish I would have known about it five years ago. Right. So I could have maybe did a little more sooner. Yeah. But it's never too late. It, right. I mean, oh, it, absolutely. But it's really absolutely. never too late. But, you know, like you said, it was great to, to listen to people that uh, aren't just trying to better their careers, but also better their personal life with their family life. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Because right. really, if, if you're, if you're, if your personal life is messed up, the chances are that your work life isn't going to be the greatest either. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if, you know, it's like anything else. If you can't money, manage your money at home, you're probably not an accountant at work. Right. You, you know what I mean? That's probably not your field. But, you know, but it, it's just trying to get everyone's life a better quality of life and really at the end of the day isn't that what we're really trying to do that's that's what i go to work for man right i mean i don't get me wrong i, I love what i do and everything but you know if i didn't have to work i probably wouldn't work the way that i work you know yeah, what i mean I, right. I, I couldn't sit just sit on my butt and not do anything all day every day but i wouldn't work you know 50 60 70 hours a week right um if i didn't have to right you know what I mean? right I, I i think that we can all agree on that unless you're doing something that you know isn't work you know like like for instance say an athlete or or something like that that they're actually doing something that you know they would be doing whether they got paid to do it or not right you know what i mean yeah um, but I, I'd imagine most of us get up and go to work every day. You know, that's why we ask that question mm -hmm. when, when we have people on our show. You know, yes. why do you, what drives you? And especially someone in, in your shoes and right. the people that were probably speaking at this event shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If y'all really wanted to, you probably wouldn't, you know, you, you could set yourselves up right now mm -hmm. to not have to do this anymore. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So yeah. obviously there's something other than money. Yeah. That is is getting you to, you to get up and be stressed at four thirty in the morning when you're three hours behind, right. wondering what what text went off, what emails went out, all that kind of stuff. You right. know what I mean? Yes. So, um, I, I think that that's yeah, and not not letting someone down, right, is really what it comes down right. to. You, whether, you've got a lot of mouths to feed now. Yeah, whether, you know? whether it be a client or you guys, I'm afraid to let you guys down. That's that's probably one of my biggest fears. But I really look at that being a healthy fear today. Oh, absolutely. You, you know absolutely. what I mean? I've, I've had a lot of fears in my life, and a lot of them weren't healthy fears like I have today. I have, I have what I call healthy fears in my life right. today. And we probably wouldn't be making the moves that we're making and doing the things that we're doing and all that kind of stuff without those healthy fears. Right on, man. You know? From all so, of us. From all yeah, of us. Yes. It's all good stuff. So, it really is. Um, I want to I want to flip through here and ask you a couple questions about some of the stuff that you that you've seen out there. Yeah. Um, so this first slide here is the GAF booth, mm -hmm. um, which was it the one before that? No, that's that's our advertisement there. Um, I'd imagine they had solar on site. They did. They did. Um, what all kinds of was there any anything new on the shingle side of things? Um, that they were showing off, or was it pretty much all the HDZ? It was the HDZ's. HDZ stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, which okay. they're still, you know, promoting the uh, uh, limitless wind rating, uh, things of that nature. Um, there was a lot of actually, they had a lot of their a uh, good bit of their commercial TPO mm -hmm. oh, okay. was on site. Unfortunately, they didn't have anyone there. Yeah, so I'm to, sure you to, guys can for, see for me what's to be able going to talk on here. to a salesperson or not because. What happened was is um, Las Vegas had put in their, their kind of sort of started to put their COVID restrictions back in place, mm -hmm. like about a week before this. Right. So what happened was is GAF, they came out and they set up shop just like they did. And they actually had the largest display there. They, they it looks up, big, man. Yeah, they took up more space than anyone else that was there. They had a huge presence there. And it's a shame that, you know, that they felt um, compelled to uh, keep their people safe 
and not allow anyone to show up to the, the expo. Yeah. But, but it was still cool. And like you said, they, they had solar on display. They had a lot of really cool videos and stuff of that nature. Like So you could watch. Some of it was uh, the HDZ. And then I think, uh, I don't know if I put the photo in there or not, but there was um, pictures of a dugout for a college uh, baseball team. That, gotcha. that had HDZ shingles on it. So they had a big display of that and it says GAF on it and stuff like that. And the, and the things and the people that GAF partners with and <clears throat> the stuff that they do to give back to, you know, the community and, and different homeowners. And uh, I think they do a uh, no roof left behind mm -hmm. kind of thing for veterans. Uh, you know, just so, so there was a lot of that stuff there that, you know, that, but I didn't see anything unfortunately that that was new and being launched now there are some things that i know about that mm -hmm. unfortunately i can't we we can't right speak about yet right. and they didn't have it there yeah i was curious to know if they no i would have had all the cloth off no. anything no. while they were there no sorry guys yeah i tried yeah so here is um <coughs> their gaf energy section with yeah. a pretty familiar um solar display here yeah, if did. you guys have been out to our home show um, we have something very similar to this. The only thing that differs with theirs, if you guys can see, they actually have um, up here. They have a uh, what shows how how it looks under the shingles. You yep. know what I mean, so they have a piece of flashing that's mm -hmm. cut in half there to kind of show yep. how it's nailed down, how it's attached. Um, shows the underlayment, the fire barrier, right. all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's they pretty showed neat. like the the direct the deck. Right. And then the underlayments, the fire rated underlayment, um, they showed how it was step flash, like the skylight kit. And like mm -hmm. you said, the head flashing here, or the apron flashing, I guess, that went over top of the, the flashing. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually pretty cool how they had it. They had it on a steel frame that you can actually take the roof part off of to transport it. And then it was also like the frame was on wheels and it would spin if oh, you needed nice. it to spin for some reason. So. I actually have other pictures on how they built that, so then maybe we can use that same nice. concept. Nice, That shows next year or years after. Um, so here's another, these are just a couple pictures of the GAF display. As you guys can see, I mean, this thing's massive. This thing is definitely massive. Yeah. Um, big so, video wall here. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was a pretty cool picture of the HDZ. And then Hover. Hover. Yeah. Hover, what was going on with those guys, man? So basically, they were showing you the, you know, how they can do the three dimension of the house and how it does the roof, the roof, the siding, the gutter, soffit, fascia takeoff, and basically a rough opening of the windows. Mm -hmm. So at least you could quote it, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty slick. That most aerial takeoffs don't give you like a rough opening. Right. Of the windows. Now, Eagle View does a great job. Okay. They also do that too. So at least you can count the windows and make sure that it's under 101 United inches right. or if it's over. So at least you could quote it, especially during COVID. Like if someone wanted windows, but they didn't quite want you in the house yet or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? You could do a contactless quote by, by doing, you know, a 360 image of their house. And, and why I found it interesting to go over to the, the hover booth was is because our E360 through through um, GAF is actually the, the operating system is hover. It's mm -hmm. the same exact thing as E360 that GAF uses. So that's what intrigued me to go over and, and talk to these guys. And you know, there wasn't a lot that they didn't tell me that I didn't already know about mm -hmm. it, but I just thought it was cool to meet them in person. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So if anyone doesn't know what hover is, that is like a a satellite imagery software that um, can take a satellite image and make measurements yeah. and help contractors do takeoffs on, on site. So that's what allows us to get a um, estimate back to you sometimes within an hour. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it, and see, that's the thing too. It, it, it cuts down on making errors. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, it cuts down on waste. It cuts down on overages. Mm -hmm. You know, it nails it. I don't know what the percentage of the accuracy is. But it, it's pretty dead on. I mean, yeah. we've used them, I don't know how many times, and then they give you different options too with the 10% ways, 12, 15, so on and so forth. Right. 
So it, it's kind of hard to goof it up. Like they, they, they do all the work for you, really. Right. They, they tell you how many pieces of drip edge, you know, how many linear feet of that, starters, ice and water, underlayment, shingles, ridge vent, cap shingles. I mean, really, if you're, if you're looking to get into like a sales position, mm -hmm. okay, in the roofing industry or siding or, or yeah. windows and or whatever you do. Never slap a shingle in your life. Yes. This, this is a great tool <laughs> right. for, for you to learn on to, to gain, you know, and the understanding of like how a roof works and the yeah. components that, that you have to use in order to, to give a customer a watertight product. Gotcha. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah it was, That's it awesome, was, man. Yeah, it was nice to meet those guys. So. That's awesome. Yep. Here's the big daddies here. We love these things, man. Yeah. We got two of these ourselves. Um... I mean, what a tool this is. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know what this is, this is called an equipter. Um, so they were on display here. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit for you guys and show you what exactly it is. Um, basically, it is a dump trailer on wheels that also has hydraulic lift capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, it can lift up. It can angle for a dump. It has a bit like... Um, for lack of better terms, bays that open up on the top, so mm -hmm. it'll funnel uh, trash down into it. Right. Um, it has a tailgate that lifts up and down hydraulically, um, and it also you can also set it straight up and boom it out towards the roof. If you have like yeah. a, let's just say you have a, a bump out porch or something like that that you got to get it up to the main roof, you can park it in front of the porch, lift it straight up, and then boom it into the to the roof. Yes. Yeah. So, it's really nice. It, it's great. You know, for uh, you know, clean up at the end of the mm -hmm. job, or let's just say um, you're you're kind of a roofing company that that does their own deliveries. Mm -hmm. So, if if you're doing like a single story rancher or something like that, it's really ideal. You know, you can get it up. I think it's about 12 feet. Right. So so if you have a you know single story rancher that's somewhere between nine and 12, you know, nine and 10 feet tall from the sidewalk up to the gutter line. So you can load your shingles up, go to the supply house, put the shingles in the back of that thing, put it on the back of your truck, haul it out to the job site, raise this thing up to the roof, and then it's got a tailgate that's on hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, it's kind of like a tailgate on the back of a truck, but this thing's got hydraulic arms on it. Right. That I don't even know what the weight rating is, but you can slowly bring this thing down right onto the roof so it's safe. So your guys aren't like slipping off this thing, falling on the roof, going underneath it, Right. It, it makes it real safe. I think they hold up to, um, I want to say, that that particular one there, I think the RB48 stands for 4,800 pounds. Mm -hmm. So they hold a lot of weight. I think safely we can get about, like on a tear-off, if we don't bring a dumpster, and if the job is small enough, it, it, it'll definitely do. Take the shingles out there, like under 12 squares or less. I wouldn't mm -hmm. do like a 20 square job or even a 15 square job you might be able to get away with, but I would not go over that, especially if it's double layered. Right. Because then it's right. 30 squares. If it's 13 if it's 13 squares, it's 26 squares of shingles. So you don't want to do that, but we use it like on city properties mm -hmm. where you can't uh, get a dump trailer in because the unique thing about this thing is, is you actually can drive it. Right. And it's got turf tires on it. So you're yeah. not tearing you're not tearing the neighbor's yard up, you're not tearing the homeowner's yard up, and then let's say you're doing a city job. This thing will drive up onto the sidewall and, and you can drive it right down the sidewall. Right. It's slick as heck, man. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, I know we're gonna be, I have a tear off down in Maryland that we're gonna be doing on Monday, and um, it's gonna be you know, super critical to have that thing mm -hmm. down there mm -hmm. because the way these this tear off is, it's, it's a big townhome, <clears throat> And the buildings are so close together and they have courtyards and walkways in the middle of them. Right. So you can't get a dumpster in there. Yep. Can't get a dumpster anywhere close to the building. So we're going to stage a dumpster about 50 yards away from the building, mm -hmm. load all the trash in, drive it over, and dump it into the dumpster. Yeah, man. So, I mean, it's, Ideal for that situation. I would not want to pick up 100 square shingles no off the ground. No you way. Know, shingle wrappers, all that kind of stuff yep. off the ground at the end of that tear off. No so, way. No way. Um, it's going to save us a lot of time. It's going to save us a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and it's going to help us, you know, do what is most important, which is leave the job site better than it was when we got Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So, and that's the whole point. We, right. we don't want to do more damage than, you know, there was before we got there. Right. We're always trying to improve the home. That's why it's called home improvement. Absolutely. Did they have any kind of new stuff or were they just kind of showing off? There, there was, but it wasn't there. I saw, I think it might have been in their literature where they actually put an arm on it. 
So then it, it's almost like uh, like an engine hoist. It, it reminded me of an engine hoist where I'm assuming that like you can hook like a skid of shingles to it and it would take it further up the roof gotcha. for you. So you would take that up, grab the shingles out of it, and then telescope this up the roof to, to take it further up the roof. That's awesome. You. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Or I guess you know what would be really slick if the sh if skid of shingles was on the ground and you needed to pick them up and put them in the back of it. I'm sure there's multiple things you could figure out how to use right. or what to use it for. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, yep. man. Yep. That's awesome. So here's Stinger. Yes. Um, and anyone that doesn't know what a Stinger gun is, a Stinger gun is a, is a type, it's basically a handheld, handheld uh, stapler on steroids. Mm -hmm. um, it shoots a staple into a round plastic cap that's about the size of a quarter. Um, and what that does is when you nail down felt paper or synthetic felt or anything like that, you know, a lot of guys just use regular slapstick mm -hmm. staplers. Yep. Well, you have a real thin, a staple's real thin. Right. You know, so, so the, the point of contact is really small. Yeah. So it can't handle a lot of, a lot of stress. You know, the wind will, will pull the staples through and all that kind of right. stuff a lot easier. Yep. You know, these, these cap nails or cap staples, um, they have a bigger surface area, so they allow for more stress. Exactly. Um, the wind, it's a lot harder for the wind to tear them off. And it's actually a requirement for um, for synthetic felt when you put them down. When yeah, you put that for down, a GAF when you're, lifetime warranty. When you're doing a lifetime warranty, you have right. to have the, the cap nails in there. Right. And another good point is, too, it's a lot <laughs> safer for the guys to be up there working because I don't know how many times I've seen, especially with organic felt paper, where the, the paper rips because, like you said, the surface or the, 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 the staple just isn't mm -hmm. big. It's yeah. not like it has a head on it like a nail would. Right. You know what I mean? Like like a siding nail has a real big head on it. So what what the caps, you know, do for the staple, it, it actually gives it like a bigger head. Yeah. More of a surface to hold things down yeah. in place so they don't tend to slide out. Or like you said, if the wind comes and picks up, you know, it's not going to tear it off. Things right. of that nature. And like you said, too, it's also a requirement for lifetime roof system. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, Todd, but when you're when you're using just a regular slapstick stapler, um, obviously the way that that mechanically works, when you slap it down, there's a head or a pin that drives that staple into yep. the into the wood. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, you know, the object of this thing, it's like a hammer. I yes. mean, you beat it against the roof. Yes. Well, sometimes if you hit that thing too hard, that head will actually drive the nail and also rip the paper at the yes. same time. So yep. you're really not even nailing anything. Exactly. It looks like you are, Yes. but it's actually ripped around the staple. Yes. So yes. Um, that can that can become very unsafe, as you said, you yes. know, very quickly. You think you got a whole row of ice and, or ice and water or paper yeah. on yeah. there, and then you step on yes. it and it just goes. Yes, um, right, and this, like you said, having mm -hmm. that, that cap on there, that alleviates that, it's called the hammer. Yeah. When the hammer pokes out, the hammer the staple or nail mm -hmm. in, it tears the paper and let's say it's empty. Right. You how many times have Oh dude. And you're going and going You look and back going ten and going. feet and it's like, wait a minute, there's yes. even any staples on that. Exactly. Well this is kind of foolproof. So <laughs> everyone no, knows what we're talking about. Right. So that. if there's no fluorescent <laughs> green caps coming out, then you know you're empty. Yes. Yes. So absolutely. That's what's so slick about it. It does a lot of I mean it serves a, a, a lot of purposes. Yeah. For yeah, sure. It's a really really cool design. And they actually have those um, if you guys notice down here in the bottom. They actually have versions of these stingers yes. um, that aren't, you know, the slapstick, the mechanical, the, yep. the, the, the mechanical. mechanical one. Yeah. You know, this is this is an air-powered gun. Pneumatic. Which pneumatic. Yeah. Yes, pneumatic. Yeah. Um, which you know saves the arm from beating. For sure. Um, it saves the uh, the misfires that happen sometimes because yep. sometimes your caps don't separate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've any any normal thing that's happened. Anyone that's that's used them or staple guns. You know, they get jammed sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The pneumatic sure. version works it's a so lot better. Yeah. so much yeah. quicker. Yeah. So much quicker. You save so much time with it. And, and you know, it, like you said, it, it's not getting jammed up mm -hmm. like, like a regular staple gun is. And, you know, the, the way when you fill those things, it's actually quicker to fill it. It's just the time saving and safety of it. You know, you're, you already have your roofing air hose right. up there. Yeah. Why not use spend a couple extra bucks? It, it basically takes the same... Same mm -hmm. style as it would as a mechanical, right? You know, slap stapler wood is the pneumatic, so yeah. it's really no brainer to get one. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. So that's just a, an example, guys. Of right. you know, it's not just yeah, the right material companies, the roofing companies, you know, yeah. the shingle companies, shingle manufacturers. No. 
you know, it's the tools that are out there that the that the trades use to Absolutely. install these things. Mm-hmm. Fast you know? Yeah, yeah. Huge. So huge. Um, oh boy. Here's the guys from Roofscope. If you guys watched our show last week, um, this is the company that does a lot of our in-house takeoffs. You know, for our new construction side. What we like about these guys so much is they don't just work off of satellite imagery, which they can do just right. like a hover, mm-hmm. but they also work off of paper blueprints. Yes. You know, which which a lot of these um, That's huge. companies lack in, you right. know. Yeah. Um, for instance, you know, this this isn't just for a new construction thing, you know, for, for all you retail guys out there and salespeople, um, you don't have to be going into a new construction development to, to, to run into an issue where you need something like this. Absolutely. What if you have a customer that wants to replace their roof and build mm. an addition and put a roof on it? There you go. The addition doesn't exist yet. Right. You know what I mean? But mm. I guarantee you they have a blueprint. Yes. You know, so right. um, they, they'll they be able to take that off. They'll be able to get you a siding, uh, a siding takeoff, yep. you know, gutter takeoff, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. You yeah. know, the roofing, I think they do everything. stucco. I think they do masonry. They, they do... All kinds of things and then within the program too they have uh, you know kind of like a, an estimating software in there as well that we find really slick as hell because it, it's kind of set up like an estimating software that the insurance companies use called Xactimate but their version of it's called ProDot mm-hmm. <laughs> so once you get your takeoff those okay so on the takeoff you'll get your aerial or you do your blueprint takeoff however you want to use Roofscope um, they basically add everything up for you too. They don't mm-hmm. just give you like the square totals and, and, and the, the areas, you know, the square amounts of the areas. They give you basically the entire takeoff. They'll give you how many pieces of drip edge you need, starter, same thing as hover, okay? But what's unique about these guys, like you said, they also do paper blueprints, but they also have pro docs within the system, mm-hmm. okay? So in that, it, it like, you, you pull it up and we can actually show you later how slick it is but when you go into this okay it already has everything quantified mm-hmm. I know that's your favorite word, I love that, word. That, that's why I used it yeah man so I love that word. <clears throat> I'm sorry I got like this thing in the back of my throat here <clears throat> my allergies have been killing me today but um, so it quantifies everything for you mm-hmm. okay so basically the only thing that you really have to put in there is is like your your labor price your your unit price like how like if it's 58 squares of shingles 50 bucks times 58 squares of shingles it'll quantify everything for you like they take out they take out the legwork for you like they do all the heavy lifting and then you turn this over to the the homeowner or potential client and you look like the rock star but really behind the scenes (laughs) they did all the work they're like wow your estimate is great yeah like you nailed it on every single thing you know what i mean because Mm -hmm. in the pro docs it has anything from like you know pitch changes would need to be quantified different for anything from like a seven to to like a nine pitch would would cost something different and then from like 10 to 12 would cost something different so like everything they you can't forget anything right they already have it on there for you you just need to basically put in your unit price Mm -hmm. yeah it's like yeah that's cool man it is that's cool it's very slick so you know we we love those guys and plus we do um you know they they communicate with the crm that we use right now too so yeah um, that's that's really big um, to the point that you know they, we can take their measurements and, and put them into in with our formulas we have in our CRM mm-hmm. and generate material lists just right off that based off of all the formulas we have in there. Yep. Um, and you know we it, it just it communicates. You know, yes. As soon as we as soon as we get the the roof scope document back, the the system that we use reads that document. Yeah. You know, the HTML coding and all that kind of yep. stuff. So. It's really slick. It is um, slick. And these guys are great. They are great. Um, They're a good partner of ours. Yeah. yeah I mean, so they really are. Chris, the guy that's on the far left right there, he's our account manager. And he's like our Dave King at Bruce Go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Every, every company's got their Dave King. And, and I can't say enough good stuff about Dave King. Well, Chris Lanes is, is a rock star. I could call that dude right now. And I think they're actually two hours different than we are. Mm-hmm. He'd answer the phone. If he didn't answer the phone, he'd call me back. Mm-hmm. It's probably because he's on the phone or he's putting his kid in bed or, or whatever. But he, he's one of those guys that goes over and beyond, answers all of your questions, very patient with you, speaks in, in a monotone 
like voice like he's just cool comic collective if you guys watched last week's show mm -hmm. that's that's he's he's on the show and it's just listening to him talk is like you know he's not cocky he's not arrogant but he knows his shit do you know what i'm saying he doesn't act like i know my like he he was actually after the show was over he said i heard you mention something and I don't know what it is. And I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to embarrass him in case he's watching. But he was, he was humble enough to ask me, what, what was that that you were talking about? And, and I explained to him, he's like, you know, I've been doing this for a while now and, and uh, I, I never knew what that was. Oh, nice. You, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's the kind of people all of them are. I got to meet the owner. I had, I had two meetings with the owner out there. Um, a great, great guy. He actually... so. A little quick story behind Roofscope. Roofscope was designed by a roofer mm -hmm. for roofers. Right. They still have a roofing company, very successful roofing company out in the Midwest. Um, and of course, they use Roofscope themselves and, and are very successful with it. And, and he's a very successful businessman, just a great guy. Yeah. Just like we were talking about earlier, a guy that, that, that has the same vision. I love the way I told him probably four or five times that. I love the way that he thinks. I mean, he just very humble, very, um, you know, uh, charismatic. I mean, just, just a lot of energy, good, positive energy right. guy. I mean, just great people. I, I mean, I really can't say enough about him. Yeah. Yeah, you that's know? awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. For sure. I'm, they're definitely a good partner of ours. We use them a lot. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Um, and then... Yeah. I was creeping on... Roofing Insights, this is another, uh, yeah. this is a uh, guy by the name of Dimitri, has a uh, really large roofing company, um, has a really big following. He actually um, sold his roofing company. Oh, did he? Yeah, he sold it. This is all he's doing now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he has a big uh, uh, Roofing Insights, which is a, a big YouTube channel um, that, you know, a lot of the people in the roofing industry watch, get, get nuggets from, yeah. and um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he, very, he had um, that popular he he does uh, a lot of mentoring he holds uh the roofing school inside school uh so he'll actually come to your shop train you guys mentor you kind of give your business an audit yeah and uh just really intelligent guy very successful business owner as well and all about taking care of himself physically mentally and spiritually so good dude very good dude so that there is the catch-all should have got some better pictures of those guys, but uh, so this is our next latest and greatest uh, piece of equipment that we'll be using in conjunction to the equipter. And I so badly wanted to mention it when you were speaking about the equipter, right? Um, because where where the equipter can't go or reach, you don't have to worry about it damaging the bushes anymore. So what this does is, if you look at that closely enough, that actually goes up against the house and protects the bushes. And then it also has more, and I'm going to call them, for lack of better terms, tarps right. that, are, that are actually like a net, a netting. Okay, so the netting goes, they give you enough netting to go over the bushes, go over the yard, so there's no more picking up, you know, nails, little pieces of felt paper. You know, nails I know is one of our biggest, you know, nemesis mm -hmm. of making sure we're getting all the nails out of the bushes, out of the grass, out of the mulch. Well, that's over now. So once this comes in now it's going to take a little longer than i thought because today i actually was informed that they weren't going to ship it until i gave them our logo if you see in that picture where it says logo goes here well i right. got to send them that's actually on velcro so oh, we okay. can replace them you can pull them on and off oh nice okay so then when the shingles are coming over at some point in time it's going to wear out right okay right so we need to send them our logo so they're going to ship it all at one time but the salesperson there told me that and i've heard it before so i'm not sure why this person said for me to send the logo but whatever um so i need to send them the logo hopefully tomorrow i'll get around to doing that so we'll get this and i bought the biggest kit that they have so it should go the whole way around the home one single family yeah. or we can split it up into two and do two roofs in one day where these would be required where you know you could only put it you know tear off the front first tear down the equipment, put it out back, tear the back off, you know what I mean, which I think under normal circumstances most right, people right, do right. that, but I'm a go big or go home kind of guy, so I bought the entire freaking kit. So. Yeah, man, this this is awesome. Yeah. That thing's awesome. This is going to, 
um, get us out of out of some situations sometimes because there is sometimes where it's very hard to get a tarp down. Absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes people have big bushes. Like for instance, uh, the job that we did with the solar. Mm -hmm. You know, they had landscaping, some some big different mm -hmm. size bushes. Yeah, man. I mean, to get a tarp in there, sometimes it's like weaving up and down. Yeah. You can't. You know, then you get a, a giant clump of heavy shingles right in the middle of some bushes. Right. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and it, and it saves the siding too. I mean, I'm sure you've well, just, seen numerous just, times where siding gets dinged up. I was at a property one day, um, quoting this guy, and, and he had a koi pond. Mm -hmm. And I, that's that's probably the day I said to myself, God, I wish I had a catch all. Mm -hmm. You know, because he had probably a hundred thousand dollars in landscaping, and I'm talking just probably in his backyard. Yeah. We're not even talking about the sides. We're not even talking about the front yard yet. This dude had a koi pond, and I thought, man, we really need one of them because the beautiful thing about the catch-all is it's not a tarp, okay? So it's not going to kill your bushes. It's not going to kill your grass, and it's not going to, like, if you got a koi pond, you're not throwing a piece of plastic, so then you cut the oxygen off to the fish that's inside this koi pond because what it is, it's netting. I should have took a better picture. Yeah. When we get it, we'll, we'll do a tutorial on the whole thing, but it's a net. That's the net right there. And it comes with all those poles, and and they 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 telescope. They, yeah. they uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? They telescope. Telescope. Right. So you can get them up higher. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the nets that they have up at like driving ranges. Right. And stuff like that's that's what it reminds me of, like a like a mesh. Yeah. Like a thick, you know, good durable mesh netting. Yeah, it is. Um, do, do they? I mean, do they? Is there any kind of guarantees on the product that you know? nails aren't going to rip it or anything like that like are we going to end up with a big holy thing or like i asked her about the warranty that it came with and she mm -hmm. says unfortunately they, they i mean of course it comes with i i asked if it came with a lifetime warranty i should have right. asked what what type of warranty now her answer to lifetime warranty was is no um because unfortunately and i even finished her sentence for her was is that okay we're roofers we're right on stuff the, you know what I mean? Like, we're there at some point in time, I'm sure something's going to break. But that's the other cool thing about this is, is we can buy any part, piece, and component mm -hmm. that we need. Yeah. Later on. Yeah. That's yep. cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So it seems like you, you know, you've seen a couple good products out there. Yeah. Um, I watched a couple, a couple videos and seen a couple products that um, we didn't mention on here. Um, anything from like safety devices that you hook on the ridge. Um, to allow you to get up steep slopes. Yes. Um, devices, that. devices that can be used to hook your ladder up to gutters. Yes. Um, you know, all, all kinds of different things. So, um, it really, uh, it, it really kind of reaffirms what you were saying on. You know, it's not just the industry stuff, the shingle manufacturers, that kind of stuff. But you know, safety equipment. Yeah. Um, stuff to make make cleanup easier between this and an equipper. I mean. Yeah. You know, you're you're hitting it out of the park with those two things. Yeah, for so. sure. I think they were good. I think it was good. The whole thing was good for me to, to experience and learn and the knowledge. And then the, the new equipment that's out there, there was actually this thing. <clears throat> it was called the shingle rocket. So basically, and I, and I talked to you mm -hmm. about it. I should have took a video of it and I forgot. But basically, it reminds you of those shoots that you would see in the city where they're like demoing like the 15th floor and they had these shoots where you could throw all the trash in it and mm -hmm. we'd go into the dumpster. Well, this thing reminded me, imagine an equipter without the dump box on it. Mm -hmm. This thing had a, a big chute on it, Not, and, but, but it was manageable enough so you could, it was like essentially a trailer that right. had the hitch, right. had the wheels, had the hydraulic, so you could raise it up and swing it so you wouldn't have to like drive it that the arm would actually swing and then it would telescope right to get gotcha. it up closer to the roof so ideally it would work great with the equipter because the equipter only goes up about 12 feet so this thing essentially would go the whole way up to the gutter on a two two and a half story home mm -hmm. so you can get all the trash in it and it would go through the tube which was a, like a like an aluminum Tube. So, like, just like the equipment was made out of, like, a real right. thick aluminum. Right. Yeah, it was, it was slick. It was called the shingle rocket. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, seems like you had a great time, man. Is there, is there any particular thing that you can think of that mm -hmm. stuck out the most that you took back with you? 
Um, probably what I mentioned early on, as far as the equipment goes, or just overall. Just, just overall. Um, you know, what's what's the biggest nugget that you learned there that you're taking back with you? If that's not, you know, if we're not going to be, you know, divulging any any secrets here or anything like that. <laughs> hmm. I have a couple secrets, um, but no. Um, so the biggest nugget that that I got from it was probably a lot of what I touched on early early on in the show. Gotcha. Was, you know, it's not just about, you know, improving my career, but improving the quality of my life. Right. You know, if I got anything out of it, I mean, believe me, there, I could, we could sit here for a whole nother hour and I could tell you, I could go down day by day, hour by hour of all the things that, you know, there was so much going on and I wanted to absorb all of it. And, and I did a really good job on, on meeting the people that I wanted to meet. The things that I saw that interest me, I went over and I spoke with them and I, I stepped out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And maybe that's probably the nugget that I got and subconsciously, unconsciously knowing that, you know, once again, I had stepped out of my comfort zone and went over and introduced myself to people that I didn't know and sure as hell didn't know me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and there was this one kid that was selling a product that was like, um, like a... JP, mm -hmm. and but it was more geared towards because all of them, Job Nimbus, AccuLynx, Jobber, they all do something different. They all don't do the they they, they all pretty much do the same thing, but they all don't seem to do exactly everything that I needed to do. So this kid's program or CRM or or whatever you want to call it, because I'm not even sure if it was exactly a CRM. But it was, it, I think it was called Clocker. So it was, it was more geared towards um, clocking in and clocking out for service companies. Mm. Yes. So, That's one we've been searching for. Yes. So I spoke <laughs> to him and the thing that discouraged me was, is that he'd never heard of Job Progress. Oh, really? Yes. So after speaking with him for a while... The kid was good, and he was so good. What he was so good of a salesperson that he didn't even work for this company. He was a local that they had hired to come out to sell stuff for this company while they were at the trade show. Hence, why he's never heard of Job Progress because he's not technically from our industry. Oh, yes. gotcha. Yes, okay. but I, it took me a minute because I talked to this dude. I bet for a good thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he picked up on what he was, what they were selling pretty quick and I think a lot of companies out there like I said the restrictions were coming back um, so I think a lot a lot of people didn't show up that they thought was going to show up it wasn't as big as last year last year was in Texas and which is kind of unusual well maybe not because it was in Texas but it was the largest one that they had ever mm -hmm. had more people would show up like 70 plus thousand people came um, but this, this wasn't like that at all. Um, and I think a lot of vendors had backed out. Um, so I think those who didn't, some of those who didn't, because the, 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 the woman that I bought the, the catch-all from was actually the same woman that I spoke to at um, Win the Storm conference. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So she traveled. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. so she actually works for catch-all. She's not <laughs> just somebody they picked up locally. And I think moral story is, uh, I think a lot of the vendors that were there tried to find people that were local so they didn't have to ship their people out there. Yeah, during, during, during the COVID way. and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so we want to do a couple shout-outs here. I yeah. definitely want to shout-out. we got a, a big birthday coming up here. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> our fearless leader tomorrow is his birthday. Yes. How old will you be, man? Uh, like 39. 30. I thought, I thought you were going to say 35, but... No, 39. <laughs> yep. Big 3-9 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you got anything excited playing? Um, anything? You and Janet going to do anything fun? You know, I guess I feel some kind of way because I was gone for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, that I just feel like I'm not worthy of doing something special. <laughs> you know, because I've already, you know, the past week and a half, I mean, I got to experience a lot of good stuff. I had a good time. Now, that, not that it wasn't work pleasure type type of stuff. Um, and I always bring work with me, so it doesn't matter where right. I'm at or where we go. Yeah. It's it's we're some. I'm gonna figure out something to come up yeah. with work. About. I know. I talked to you Thursday, and you were like, you told me that because uh, you were originally supposed to come home Friday, and you were like, well, 
our flight got delayed and we can't leave till Saturday. And I was like, man, what a bummer. Yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Your flight gets delayed in Vegas. What a bummer. Yeah. Well, what I sh what we really should have did, but I'm glad we did come home on Saturday. We should have stayed Saturday because Friday night was probably the best. I felt because I knew nobody was work. it was it was Friday night yeah and I'm in Vegas yeah and I didn't really get to experience Vegas because it, it's through the work week like right. I just didn't feel right to hang out the, in the casino all night or go check out a show or, or stay up real late even though we ended up staying up late but it really well, wasn't that was the time yeah, difference right, right. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean like you know I'm a big dog dude I'm up at 1 30 really it's <laughs> It's eleven thirty. Yeah, you know Eastern Standard Time, but right. but it, it was it was weird. It was crazy, but um, I had never had been to Vegas before. That was my first experience with Vegas. Um, Jana did more gallivanting than I did. I was more into like the, the trade show mm -hmm. and what was going on. Like I did, I was like a kid in a candy store. Like I didn't want to leave, and I was like a baby who didn't want to go to sleep because. I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> do, do you know what I'm saying? So that's really, you know, that was my, my thought process behind it. And then in the evenings, I'd start to ease up and quit beating myself up for not being at work. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I knew it was after work hours. And that's where I think I came up with where I felt like I lost three hours in the morning. But in the evening, I was able to gain three hours back because y'all closed up shop. And yet it's still only 530 here. Yeah. Do you, do you, you know what I mean? Right. When it was 8.30 back here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember the, the one night I texted you. I, I was going to text you, and I was like, wait a minute, it's late. And I was like, wait a minute, it's not late for him. I'm no. going to text him. Yeah. You're like, what are you still doing up? I know. Um, right. But yeah, man, it, it, I'd imagine that that is, you know, took a little bit of time to deal with, to get used to. Yeah. Um, are you going to go next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, never not, miss it again. I'll right? never miss it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll never miss it again. And Janice said, old high backer. Yep. Yeah, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, it man. was good stuff. And yeah. of course, while I'm out there, I'm like, all right, our next office is going to be across the street over here from the Mandalay Bay. You should have saw the roof damage down there. Oh, yeah? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Really? Yes. I don't know why. I wonder how many companies are cashing in after. I don't know. After and having see, all them companies. I don't know if this makes any sense or not. But when it's 112 degrees, okay, and I'm not exaggerating, it was hot. Yeah. I didn't want to go Galavan. I didn't need to go outside. This place was so goddamn big, dude. Yeah. I didn't have to leave. And where we were staying, in conjunction to where the convention, it was connected to the same building, but there was three hotels at Mandalay Bay. Okay, so they're all connected. One, two, three casinos. I mean, this place was freaking huge. It was yeah. great. So, um, but I'm wondering, and I thought to myself, with it being 100 degrees nonstop, if it has an effect on the shingles. Like, right. like, like are the shingles affected more over there because of the excessive heat all the time, most of the time, compared to here? Would be a question that I would yeah, have. Yeah, that, like, that'd be a really good question because where where I feel like we would make up for not being 110 degrees all the time, mm -hmm. we would we would make up for that in we get extreme colds too. So you have that fluctuation Expansion, of hot cold, hot cold. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? So it's like, real. so what would be um, worse for the shingle? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's a that's a really good question. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good question. Yeah, but it seemed like there was a lot, a lot of blow offs. Really? Like everywhere I looked. There was blow offs on every roof. You need to get some HDZs down there. Yeah, they do, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And a lot of it was like hotels, motels, <laughs> stuff like that, like nice, light commercial, right. easy, nothing was real steep, walkable. Yeah. So anyone out in Vegas or close to Vegas, man, check it out. Go down the strip. Check it out. That's awesome, man. Yeah, knock That's some awesome. doors. So. Well, I think we are, it's 807. I think we're, we're about done here. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any kind of questions specifically for Ty about this event or about any of the products that we went over, yeah, man. feel free to reach out. Um, I'm sure there's still a ton of stuff that you know we, we could have talked about that you know we didn't we don't have time unfortunately in, yeah. in a whole hour. For sure. Um, and there was much more things that we wanted to do, but like you said, we ran out and we were on a good roll there and, and went over a good bit of stuff. And if you want to just take the, the, the next two minutes and do some shout outs. Yeah, yeah. David KX, um, as always, buddy, thank you for watching. Jenna Shear, uh, 
uh, Chuck in the truck. Uh, Lewis, what's going on, Lewis? David KX's partner at Allied Maintenance. Mm -hmm. Giovanni piece. Molina is watching. What's going on, Mike Brown? Um, Kevin Dignis is on here. Lauren Homko, Derek Schaefer. Um, Vic behind the ones and twos is watching from over there. David Bruno, yeah. Belmont Bean Company. Um, and my, I can't scroll up any higher than that for some reason. I think because I exited in the middle of the thing, it won't let me scroll up higher. What do you got? I got Brooke Young. I got Jana Banana. Good to see you, David Bruno, my man. Victor Yuri. Uh, Scott Andrew. Andrew Scott. Uh, Ricky Day, good to see you, man. Thanks for always tuning in. You guys are the best. Um, I think that was it. Derek Schaefer, man. Let's get it together. That's right. Let's do this. Uh, Lorona, good to see you. Do, 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 do. Belmont Bean. Chuck and Trap. Thank you, brother. You're a good man. Love you, man. Um, I think that was really it. I think you covered everything. Everybody, Dingus. Glad you're part Mike Brown. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Lewis and David Tex, man. If we missed anybody, we we sincerely apologize, but we'll catch you on the flip side next week. What do you want to talk about next week, man? You want to maybe get a, get the equipment out and maybe do some donuts in the parking lot with it and get that on film? Or I'm down with it, man. See, test its capabilities out. Yeah. Let's put some stuff in it and lift it up. Okay. You know, see how far it goes out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, All right. we'll think of something cool. Cool. We'll think of something cool. All right. Hopefully everyone stays safe. We got a big storm that just rolled through here. There's gonna be a yes. lot of flooding. Um, I heard 83 is is not good. So if anyone's traveling right now, stay off 83. Um, watch the back roads with the floods. Yes. Um, this was our first ever show done live from the middle of a pond. So that's right. Um, we actually were. <laughs> we, I think we, we, we got flooded minute. here. There was we at least show. two inches of water over there. In yeah, Florida. Dude. yeah. There's definitely standing water over there. Yeah. So my feet are wet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. So we're we're grateful that we didn't get electrocuted. Yes. I don't know how and how Vic didn't over there. Hey, but. we're sitting on rubber, bro. Yeah, there we're you good. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Vic. Um, but yeah, everyone have a safe uh, rest of your week. Finish out strong. We'll catch everyone next Wednesday at seven mm -hmm. o'clock for episode eighty-seven. Um, thank you once again for everyone tuning in. If you have not liked and followed the page, please do please do so. Um, we'll see everyone next week. See you.